you hear this all the time. I need a man that is at least six foot. All men. This isn't. This isn't talking about just black men. Only 17% make six figures. You get down to black men only, it's around about 8.8%. That's it. Like the vast majority of men are not six foot. They do not have a six pack. And they do not make six figures. I'm saying that the, the standards are a little out of control. Which, and again, for, for the women who are really holding strong to those standards, I think they are shooting themselves in the foot. A lot of men who swipe right because they're just looking for somebody to get have sex with. Right. And they're just like, it's a numbers game. So I'm just going to keep <laughs> swipe, 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 swipe. <laughs> Somebody going to hit me back. Right, 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 right. The ladies also wanted me to ask, <laughs> why the hell aren't you married, bro? <laughs> Blessings, people. Welcome back to the channel once again, where we talk all things health and healing from a holistic perspective. And today will be no different. Actually, today is going to be a little different. <laughs> I got my brother from another mother, my best friend coming out with me. He is a certified relationship coach, speaker, author, Love guru. <laughs> Millions tune in to his YouTube and Instagram channels. Author of over 10 books that include Love at the Heartbreak, The Man God Has for You. He lying, sis. <laughs> 40 prayers for my future husband and many more. He's my brother, my business partner, and my best friend. Welcome, Stefan Speaks. Thank you, brother. Thank you. <laughs> I appreciate you coming here. Before we get started, man, I want to say um, I appreciate our friendship, brother. And uh, I'm not saying that because we're on the podcast. I'm saying that because I genuinely appreciate having somebody who I consider my equal uh, that I can go to not only for you know business advice, life advice, um, love advice, of course. <laughs> uh, and I just want to say thank you. Like I recently lost my father and, uh, you showed up for me uh, and, always, um, man. you know, so I wanted people to know, like, you mean the world to me, man. I appreciate that. And a so, lot of yeah, brothers, man. you know, don't show that amongst each other, but I want you to know how much I love you, bro. Uh, thanks man. I love you too, bro. Yeah. So one of the things I want to talk about really quick before we get started is that, you know, we're on our Heal My People tour right now. Yes, sir. Absolutely. You know, so, so far we hit New York, which is crazy, sold yeah. out. Yeah. Then we went to Boston, had an amazing turnout there. Either Even the city councilmen and the state yeah. representatives came out, gave us a plaque, which was really dope. Got a really great response there. And now we're just on to the next one, which yes. is Atlanta yes. coming up soon. And your city will be coming up a little bit later. But what I've noticed is, you know, we work out three times a week. And as we're traveling on the tour, people just always are finding you. <laughs> You're that guy. And you know how I am. They ain't him. <laughs> Even when we went to Puerto Rico for my birthday, yeah, yeah. It's like people recognize you. And one of the things that I, I would say that I love about your character is you stop and you talk to everybody. Even when... It makes me mad. We <laughs> at the gym, and some brother just walk up to you, and he's like wanting life advice oh, at the gym man. in the middle of a set. <laughs> and so, um, I just want to say, I know you love what you do. Yeah, you know, because you know, a lot of times you're giving away thousands of dollars of consultations in a day, mm -hmm. and um, people literally have to pull you away. So. You know, you're a vital part to our community because love is in apparel right now. Absolutely. And so that's why I thought this conversation was going to be so important for us to have today. And I wanted to be a part of what Heal My People is because one of the ways we need to heal is how we love each other and how we love ourselves. Yes. And so, you know, one of the, the questions that I have or things I wanted to break up, bring up is that there's so much floating around on the internet today about relationships and people who are going from a totally different space becoming relationship <laughs> coaches and you know not a lot of it is positive mm -hmm. you know when you're hearing the narrative and the conversations that people are having and that's one of my biggest issues like you know you're always hearing about the 
you know, the negativity that is happening, but we're not talking about solutions. We're not talking about how men are try- men are trying to find good women and women are trying to find good men. Yeah. That's the that's the basis of what's happening. And so what we really hear a lot of is toxic masculinity. The red pill community, you know, throwing shade on women. The the feminist movement creating this umbrella around toxic masculinity for all men. Mm-hmm. You know, everywhere you go, you say that we we go around on tour, they're saying that there's not enough good men. Mm -hmm. And um, the divorce rate is through the roof. And so with that being said, what what does it seem like dating today compared to pre-social media? Because today is pretty toxic. Like, what what would you say dating was like pre-social media? Because you've been doing this thing a long time. Yeah, pre-social media... So one, there was a lot less options and a lot less access. Yeah. You know, what do you and, mean by that? Well, back in the days, you know, the only people you really saw were the people at work, the people at school, the people in your neighborhood. Uh, you know, unless you were a rare person who traveled, which was not the majority of people, not like it is now, you did not see past where you lived. Right. And so that limited exposure change your perception of what's out there, what's available to me, you know, what I may like. Because once you get a taste of something, it can get hard to go back to a lower level, so to speak. It's almost like once you've had filet mignon, even though we don't eat meat over here, but <laughs> once you had filet mignon, you, you have a harder time eating Spam. Right. But when you was, when you only had Spam available, you might have thought Spam was the best thing out there. Flip that thing 13 exactly. ways. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? So it, it changes the perceptions of what is actually available, which then makes it harder for people to be happy with what's in front of them. So that's one aspect of it. But then also, because of the the over ease of access, it creates a lot of distraction. You know what I'm saying? So to me, back in the days, it was easier for people to hone in on who they were interested in. Once they found someone, they were a little bit more locked in. Now, because you can always get on social media and not just see people, see the world, see life, see events, see celebrities, everything you have more access to, now you have way more distractions. Yeah. And that creates a division in relationships as well. And doesn't allow people to lock into both their family, their lover, their kids, all these different things. Is that is that why people, in my opinion, aren't connecting? Because they have this idea, if it doesn't work out, I can always go back to the internet. There's always something else available out there. Is that playing a part in that? I, I think it plays a part. I don't think it's the big driver of it. I think the big driver of a lack of connection is just we're a more damaged, traumatized society than ever before. Yeah. Because again, in having more exposure, we're taking in more negative energy. More experience. Exactly. And even just, for example, back in the days when wars or stuff were happening, you couldn't see all those images on the internet and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. Now you're seeing images of war, killings in your neighborhood, people doing all kinds of outlandish, devious things that you never used to get to see or hear about at this rate. Gotcha. So that alone pours so much negativity and trauma into people that it's just making people more cautious, more afraid to be vulnerable on top of their own personal experiences as well. So they walk into a relationship being in a fear-based state instead of yes. a love-based state. Absolutely. You know, Absolutely. So, so people are essentially saying, I'm not searching for love. I'm searching for somebody who won't hurt me. Ex- that, that's an excellent way okay, to gotcha. put it. Gotcha. Excellent way to put it. Gotcha, gotcha. And so, like, you know, be, being a holistic doctor and always looking at things from a holistic perspective... In nature, you always see there's always a yin to a yang, yeah. a feminine to a masculine. There's hot and cold, up and down, right and left, fire, water, sun and moon. Mm-hmm. And so I always hear you talk about the importance of divine femininity mm-hmm. and the importance of divine masculinity. And the question I have for you is, first of all, can you define divine masculinity and femininity in this world where... You know, things are so skewed in terms of like when we start talking about femininity and gender and things of that nature. Can you define that? So now I'm going to give it from my perspective. Yeah. 
one divine both divine femininity and divine masculinity starts from our true healthy optimized self mm. and i say it like that because as you know the things that we eat the things that we expose ourselves to they can throw things off whether it be our hormones our perception our negative our, our energy that we're carrying and exuding yeah and all those things can take us away from our true energy all right from our divine energy as well as just overall a lack of healing from past traumas all these different things is what pulls people away from their divine energy so it starts from being our whole healthy self and of course none of us are going to be perfect yeah but the more optimized you can become in in your emotional, physical, and spiritual health, the more you can get in tune with your divine masculine and feminine. Now, from um, from the spe specific point of divine masculine, I'll start there. I believe the divine masculine is the man who is willing to face challenges, yeah. all right? Willing to overcome, willing to make things happen. And again, it doesn't mean we all do it at the same level because yeah. I believe there's some guys who are meant to do big, big things and some guys are, I don't want to say lower level, but th their purpose isn't as big, so to speak, but it's as important gotcha. because every piece of the puzzle is important if we're going to bring harmony and balance to the world, to our relationships, to our households, yeah. so on and so forth. So I believe that having that willingness to do things, to conquer things, to face challenges, walking in a level of confidence. And I think what's also very important for divine masculine energy is a level of poise, not so emotionally driven, mm. all right? And so again, we all experience emotions, but the man who can master it and not be driven by it is the man who can walk in his masculine energy. Because if you are emotionally stable, if you are emotionally reactive, you are not going to exude masculine energy. Plain and simple. Yeah. You are going to slide a little bit more into your feminine. Now, that I know some women might hear that and think I'm insulting the feminine. I'm not insulting the feminine. The reality is that, yes, the woman is more emotionally driv driven by nature yeah. because she feels more. Indeed. She senses more. Her intuition is stronger. And I believe that's part of her strength. Whereas the man's strength is not to be as emotionally driven and to be more logically sound. The woman's strength is intuition. And to allow herself to feel and sense, that's where her power is. Gotcha. To walk in that positive, loving, nurturing energy, that's where her divine feminine is. But again, to be true to herself, because we all will have exceptions to the rule. We all have different things about us that may skew from the general norm. But as long as you're being true to yourself and walking in that higher positive energy because no man who is healthy in his masculine and or woman who is healthy in her feminine are walking around with just negative energy all the time got you, you know what i'm saying so yeah. to me that's a huge part of it and uh, and when you say challenge for the fellas you're not talking about video games <laughs> and i'm asking that because a lot of like me growing up for instance my challenge came through like me and my cousins used to wrestle Mm -hmm. You know, like we used to box, you know, you, we literally used to play football with no pads on. Mm -hmm. Tackle. <laughs> yeah. And so a lot of our challenges came that way, whereas today a lot of men's challenges don't come through physical challenge. Yeah. And so, you know, you're seeing a lot of men who are challenging themselves with black ops. Mm -hmm. And so is that a form of challenge or is that not a good form of challenge to develop your divine masculine? I don't believe it's a good form of challenge to develop your divine masculine. Okay. I think there's nothing wrong if you want to engage in it. I think it's the overconsumption of it okay, that causes you. a problem. And so, as you mentioned, video game challenge doesn't have enough real world benefits, so to speak. Gotcha. All right? Because also what happens is now... Consider the other factors. You're in this room. It might be a dark room. So you're not getting sunlight. All right. You're not outside breathing fresh air. You're not being active physically. Your body needs that blood flow. Yeah. You're just looking at a screen the whole time. Right. And you got stuff in your ear. None of that is really good for the body. So it throws off whatever might have been gained from accomplishing that thing in the video game. It's getting thrown off, off, off offset by all these negative factors that aren't really healthy for the body. Gotcha. And I always say like for men, it is so important for us to understand what we're capable of. Mm -hmm. Yes. Not only physically, but mentally, uh, emotionally, um, meaning what you can withstand and how you can stay poised. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. but also spiritually as well too. So I, I really appreciate that. Also, with your divine masculinity and divine femininity, is that your, like your true north? Like, is it like guiding you in terms of attraction? And as and far as each individual, let me let me ask this question. It'll it'll make it a little bit more apparent. Is there any validity to the importance of the presence of defined, defined masculine and feminine within every relationship to be successful? Yes. And the reason why I'm asking that is because you have someone over here who's, let's say they're masculine as a man, is his true north going to be an attraction for femininity because those two things are just attracted to each other? Absolutely. I 100% I, I believe that... The man who taps more into his masculine will find himself more attracted to a feminine woman. And will that woman then be more attracted to her, her him, if she's in, in her, her divine? Yes. And, and interestingly enough, I would argue that even when she's not in her feminine, for the woman, she's still more attracted to the masculine man in the majority of cases. Yeah. She may struggle to embrace being with him or to function within that dynamic. Yeah. But her desire for that man is the same. Whereas for the man, if he's not walking in his masculine and he's walking more in his feminine, he is more likely to want to be drawn to a masculine woman. A woman who's going to handle business, a woman who's going to stabilize his life, things of that nature, because he does not have that within himself yet. Got you. And then so that goes to the question of, I hear a lot of times women will say, well, I'll start acting feminine when... He starts acting masculine. <laughs> he starts asking, acting max, masculine. And so is is that a is that a fail safe? Because and the reason why I'm asking is because again, if you if you only act this way instead of be this way, then are you gonna actually be in your feminine? So what what women who believe that are overlooking is that if you aren't already walking in your feminine and exuding that, you will struggle greatly to even attract the masculine man. Got you. So you're so not going to end up attracting that guy who's more feminine, who hasn't developed himself and evolved. So even, and, and now when you try to be more feminine within the relationship, it's at a conflict because this is not a man gotcha. who knows how to assume that role at the moment. Gotcha. So it's not going to work. And, that, and that's where the woman finds herself more frustrated, more drained, resenting that man, and it does not last. And if she does stay with him for a long time, it's a miserable situation. Gotcha. You know what I'm saying? So definitely the woman has to already be walking and exuding it. And as you mentioned or alluded to, if she's not, or it's almost like you, you have to practice who you, not, I don't want to say practice who you are, but basically it's hard to turn the switch on and off if you're constantly resting in the opposite energy. Got you. So if you are constantly walking in your masculine as a woman, the idea that you're just going to slide into your feminine when the masculine man shows up and be able to stay there consistently and comfortably it's just not true because whatever deeper traumas or issues that led to you not being able to exude feminine energy has not been resolved. And at some point, you will get triggered in this relationship. It may not even be he did anything bad, but there's something that may remind you of whatever that fear is you've been holding on to. Yeah. And now that masculine comes out. And once it comes out, it can go downhill from there. Yeah. So now it's just aggression on aggression. Yes. And so... <laughs> From my perspective, what I've seen even in um, even in homosexual relationships like le lesbians, mm -hmm. and I uh, like a few of my friends who are lesbian, there's always that the, that feminine and masculine yeah. in the role. Like, Absolutely. and so have you seen that in practice when you work with people or you know in, in ex your experience? Yeah, all the time. I, I always use that example um, when I talk to people about this. Is that yeah, it's any serious long-term homosexual relationship that you look at, one will assume the masculine and one will assume the feminine. Gotcha. It is, it's just automatic. You're not going to see two feminine or two masculine over the long term be together like that. So I always say, if, if they understand that, why are heterosexuals getting this confused or trying to act like, no, you don't have to have that. It's not that important. No, it's extremely important Got you. because it's what creates the balance in the relationship. Otherwise, you're going to have conflict. Okay, and it's just our divine nature. Yes. So As you mentioned, every there's a yin and yang to everything. Got you, got everything you. Everything needs that counter, that balance. Without it, you have conflict and chaos. Yeah. So, 
kind of leads me to a question I know a lot of a lot of my friends I have a lot of women who are very successful, beautiful, intelligent, um, but many of them would say that they're alpha females, mm -hmm. you know, because of their level of success and what they have to do to attain that uh, success. So what sort of what sort of advice would you give them? Because a lot of them, when we're like in private conversations, say they struggle when they're trying to find a man who is their equal and they're trying to be in this relationship with a man who's masculine and they're also an alpha female. Okay, so step number one is stop calling themselves an alpha female. Like okay. They have to, they have to get that <laughs> They got to remove the label. Yeah, remove it because you're now creating this self-fulfilling prophecy where you keep speaking that into existence and you're defining yourself by this label that you now get consumed by. Okay. It, rather than saying I'm an alpha woman, no, you're a, you're a woman or a feminine woman who knows how to get stuff done. Yes. That's, that's a very different mindset there because it when you say I'm an alpha woman, it basically says the masculine is my base and I'm capable of being feminine. Mm. Right? If I say I'm a woman or a feminine woman, I'm saying that's my base and now I can get stuff done and make things happen if necessary. Gotcha. It's a very different thing. So they got to change the way that they're talking about themselves, the way that they perceive it. Um, I also think you mentioned like they're looking for their equal. That's the other problem. It's not necessarily about looking for your equals, looking for your complement. Mm. Who creates a That's balance good. with you? You know what yeah. I'm saying? Because as we just talked about, there's a yin and a yang. You can't have just two alphas or two people who are... It's not about equal. It, yes, your value to each other might be equal, yeah. but your roles and, and your strengths and different things like that are there to balance each other out. Complement each other. Exactly. Instead of... Instead of being compatible, you're you're being more complementary. Yes. Which creates more connection. Yes. You need each other yes. in that balance. Yes. Okay? Exactly. You have this strength, I have this weakness, you balance me. Exactly. Got you. And again, it what it also does is that people the problem with the whole equality talk is that you're you're not allowing people to rest in their roles in a way that allows them to become masters of that role. Gotcha. All right? So it's almost like if we look at it from a basketball analogy, if I make your role, you got to rebound, you got to pass, you got to shoot, you got everything. That's your main role. You're not going to be great at any of them. Right. I'm just wearing you down. That's why usually the top scorer is not covering the best, the top scorer on the other team. Like, he's not expected to be the best defender. It might happen here and there, rare exceptions, but they understand, let me put you where you will thrive most. Right. You can still be capable of doing these other things, but this is where your strength is. And then I will pick up in this area because that's where my strength is. Gotcha. And together, we make an amazing, unstoppable team. That, that makes a lot of sense. <laughs> so so the, 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 the one-line advice is be complimentary to each other. Yes. Okay, got you. Now, I, I read a, a few statistics, and I was a little bit alarmed by them. Okay. Okay, so 50% of marriages end in divorce. 67% mm -hmm. of second marriages end in divorce. 73% <laughs> of third marriages in a divorce. So it gets worse. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> As they say, it, like, it gets worse. <laughs> Is marriage today still a functioning institution that we should be, you know, striving for? I believe so. I believe what those statistics show is not that marriage as an institution is a problem. It's people's approach to marriage that is flawed and and completely damaged and off track. Gotcha. So when you talk about, you know, 50% first marriage, 60 some percent second, 72, what that says to me is they get out the first marriage, they never heal, all right? Yeah. But they still want someone there. They're accustomed to being married. There's a lot of people who are just relationship people, marriage-minded people. They don't want to be in these streets. They don't like dating. They just want to have their person. But the problem is they don't heal. So they go to the second one, don't heal again, go to the third. And so with each experience that you don't heal from, you're creating a greater chance of choosing the wrong person to be with. Gotcha. And I believe that that's at the foundation of why marriages fail so much because people have not healed, because people choose the wrong person, and because people are not being forthcoming about what they need and what they're willing to give over the long term. Gotcha. You see what I'm saying? I think if we clean that up, 
it would make at least it would decrease the divorce numbers. Yeah, and one of the things that you know I've been saying on tour is that it's important for people to heal because the unhealed version of you, when you don't do the healing, is making decisions for you. Yeah, exactly. And when you do finally heal, you're going to wake up to all of those decisions that the unhealed version of you made. Mm -hmm. And you're going to have to deal with the consequences of them all. And I think a lot of times that's what you know pushes uh, a lot of relationships towards divorce or ending them as well, too. Yeah, absolutely. Got you, got you. So... <laughs> When I hear a lot of the back and forth around standards, because standards have become this big sort of focus mm -hmm. of conversations on relationships today, a lot of it isn't focused on connection. It's not focused on character, aligned values, things of that nature. Most of the time, it's focused on what the person has to offer mm -hmm. and what I call the sixes, okay? All right. I want a man who's six foot. <laughs> Made six figures and got a six pack. <laughs> and, you know, so so again, I want to share some statistics. Okay. 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 So, you know, and we'll kind of, and the, the reason why I want to share the statistics is because I want to play devil's advocate. On one end, I believe that people should get everything they want in life. Mm -hmm. I believe that if you become the hill version of yourself, you're a co-creator creator, along with the divine, so you can create whatever you want in your life, including the love of your life. But then there's this reality of things. Mm -hmm. And I think the reality of things, you know, should put us in check in terms of like what we need versus what we want. Yes. So let me, sh let me share some statistics, okay? The average height for a man is 5'9", and the average height for a woman is 5'4". Mm -hmm. Okay, so... You know, you hear this all the time. I need a man that is at least six foot. And most women are not six foot. Or even close. <laughs> is this is this a reasonable standard? Hold up. Okay. Only 17% of men, all men, this isn't this isn't talking about just black men. Only 17% make six figures. Mm -hmm. Okay. Less than 20%. You get down to black men only, it's around about 8.8%. That's it, okay? According to a census, the median earnings for men is around about $61,000, which is kind of high compared to what I've seen in the past. And for women, it's around $51,000, mm -hmm. okay? The top 1% of men make $819,000. That's the top 1%. Okay, we're not talking about the, the vast majority, which is yeah, the yeah, 99, yeah. Yeah. 1% of men, and the vast majority of them are married, mm -hmm. okay? And then the last statistic, side, the vast majority of men are not six foot, they do not have a six pack, and they do not make six figures. So the question is, are women placing delusional standards on men and overlooking and overstepping a lot of good men on the way to getting this Delusional fraction of a percentage of a man. Yes and no. Okay. So I look at it like this. One, I think what we have to understand is that a lot of the six foot, six pack, six figure talk, a lot of that comes from the internet. Okay. Right? And I always say people speak idealistically on the internet, not realistically. Okay. So even though tons of women say, I want a six figure man, the reality is that the vast majority of relationships involve a woman with a man who doesn't make six figures. Got All right? you. So what, what that person is going to actually- can I, can I devil's advocate Go real ahead. quick? Yes. All right. So one of the leading causes of divorce is financial issues. Yes. So could it be that they're walking into these marriages saying I'm okay with him making fifty thousand, but then the lifestyle itself is what chokes them out of the marriage? Y yes, I so I believe it's two things. One, I believe the vast, ma I don't want to say the vast, you know, I'm gonna say the vast majority. The vast majority of people do not manage their money well. Okay. All right. So that poor money management is a big issue. Then the second piece is. Too many people are trying to live above their means. Yes. So it's not that they cannot live a comfortable life where they're, they got food, they got shelter, and every blue moon may be a vacation. No, they want more. They want that extra nice car. They want yeah. multiple vacations. And that's where now there becomes a strain financially on the relationship. And then when you add that to poor money management as well, 
well, the whole thing blows up. Because now you feel like, well, damn, if he would have handled his money better, we could have took that vacation. Yeah. Or I could have bought this thing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's different stuff like that. So, But I definitely think that, again, a lot of women are still getting with men making less than six figures, not having the six pack, all these things is what they ideally want. Now, I do think it's an unreasonable standard a lot of women are setting and it's creating a box that's limiting them in ways that, as you mentioned, it, it may be what they want, but it's not necessarily what they need. Yeah. So like I just had a conversation with somebody the other day who um, online, she was putting the guy need, on online dating, the requirement was 5'11 and up. And I'm like, ain't you 5'5"? Five five? <laughs> what, what you mean 5'11 and up? She said, but in my heels. <laughs> exactly. I'm like, okay, three inch heels. Can we drop it to 5'8"? Yeah. He still qualifies. If 5'8", if you know, if you're 5'5", if you're five, five, three inch heels, he still qualifies. Yeah. She still fought me. Oh, 5'9", five 5'9". Nine, five nine. Yeah. I'm like, all right, fine. Just go ahead, 5'9". At least we're moving the needle some. Yeah. And like that alone can open up your pool vastly. Right. You know what I'm saying? So I, I think... What I think is reasonable for a woman to want a man taller than her. Okay. I think it's I think it's a bit unreasonable or very limiting to want him to be taller than you in heels. Because I always joke around like that's your fake height. That's not real height. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and you don't wear heels 24-7. Right, so right, once those right. heels are off, he's still taller than you. Right. You know what I'm saying? So I think, but again, I think women have to just ask themselves. Am I focusing on the things that are really going to impact the quality of the relationship on a day-to-day -day basis? That's the real key. Even in the things that we desire in our lifestyle. I, I remember I used to want a really big house, yeah. right? Until I finally had that really big house. And then I said, this doesn't really change my everyday happiness. I was still miserable in the house for different reasons. Yeah. So it's like, yo, if I could have everything else on point... But live in a smaller place, I take that. Yeah. Because there's way more value in, let's say, a healthy, loving relationship that you have on a daily basis than a few extra square feet in your house or an extra inch on his height. You know what I'm saying? Like, we just got to be mindful of is this really going to change the quality of the day to day relationship? And if not, I think that women and even men who have certain standards need to be more flexible. Got you, got you, got you. Yeah, yeah. Um... So you're saying that the the standards are okay? <laughs> no, I'm saying I'm saying that the the standards are a little out of control. With, and again, for for the women who are really holding strong to those standards, I think they are shooting themselves in the foot. Yeah, all right, because I, I mean I I think love is powerful, man. And what's happening is, you know, people are literally ostracizing a whole vast majority of men. And not have getting to have the experience of love. It's it's like that old saying: "It's better to have loved and lost than to have never, never loved, loved at all." Yeah. And I think that's also depriving a lot of people. So that's one of my biggest concerns. No, and it is. But again, I like I'll give an example. There was a woman on a podcast once who said when she's on online dating, she puts six foot and over for her requirements. Yeah. But the man she fell in love with was five nine. And so again, okay. I, I do think there's a there's a portion of society where they there's an idealistic view of what I want, what I desire, what I'm holding on for. But when we meet someone and we really like them, we throw the rule books out the window. Gotcha. We start changing a, lot, a few things. It's, it's almost like there could be a guy who says, well, I need a woman that got a fat booty. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But then falls in love with a woman who barely got a little something back there. <laughs> and he's like, I, I love her, so I'm going to deal with it. I'm cool with it. And he's genuinely cool. It's not like he's resenting the fact that she doesn't have it. Yeah. So I do think that real love and connection makes us more flexible. But I do think more people need to be more flexible as they stand right now gotcha. to allow more opportunities to come their way. So I do think some of the standards are a bit out of control. Um, and not, and as you pointed to the statistics, they're not realistic to what's out there. But I will say this. I think for some women, everyone looks at the world from the world that they live in. All right. So I remember when I was in college, I swore everyone had a degree. Until I looked at the statistics at that time, it was like 27% of people yeah. have a degree. And I was like, really? I swear everyone did. Because that's the world I lived in. Some of these women live in a world of men with money, live in a world of, let's say, athletes or whatever. So they're 
perception is very skewed okay. on what the reality is in the world and in life. So I think that contributes to it, but, but they still need to be mindful. But is there a difference between what you have access to it and what you can actually get, though? Yeah, um, yes, absolutely. But I, you know, I, I'll say this though. So one, yes, what you have access to does not automatically mean you can get it, or or mean you can get it for a long term serious relationship right. and genuine love. Um, I had lost my train of thought. What I was gonna say, but yeah, pretty much, definitely doesn't mean you have access. Uh, I think a lot of people. This is what I was gonna say. For a lot of people, men and women. I think that they get too comfortable with the access and not develop the other parts of them that would actually allow them to get it. Okay. So what I mean by that is you have some guys who have money, right? And may have access to beautiful women. But again, it doesn't mean she really loves him for him. She'll take him serious. They might be using him. Right. But a lot of times that's because every other aspect of who he is 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 weak. It's, it's, he doesn't have a great personality. He doesn't know how to be emotional. Like there's other things that if he worked on that and you already got the money, you would easily get what you're hoping for. You see yeah, what I'm saying? Got but people just, they, they get comfortable and, and they think, well, since I'm already here, I'm, since I'm in the room, I'm good. And yeah. it's like, no, no, you, it takes more than that. But also, yes, what's, for, what's truly best for you might be outside of this room and yeah. you need to be open to that. And so, you know, we gave women some advice with that, but what advice do we give men in navigating this space? As far as the standards are concerned? Yeah, because, you know, my thing is I'm always advocating for the average guy. Yeah. You know, like, that's the vast majority of men. Is the average guy, yeah. And the thing is, like, the average guy is a good guy. Mm -hmm. And if the... I, I know in having conversations with a lot of them, they feel overlooked, invisible, and walked over. Yeah. And um, a man who gets up every morning, goes to work, wants to take care of his family, wants to take care of his wife, that's the man that I'm advocating for. Mm -hmm. And so with that being said, like I'm just wondering like, what advice do you give them in navigating this space? Because that's a lot of mental pressure and social pressure as well for mm -hmm. them. And so as they're on the dating app, because that's one of the things that you recommend, and we know that 80% of the time women do not swipe right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so with that being said, like, what advice do you give them to kind of navigate this so that they find the woman that they want? Yeah. So I, I, I'm just a believer that there's always a path to success. All right, but how much work are you willing to put in? And then you have to evaluate is this work worth it for what I'm trying to receive? Gotcha. All right, so for that guy who's on the dating app, for example, yes, the statistics show 80% of women aren't swiping right. And for, but on the flip side, men are constantly swiping right on women. But I think we're not adding enough context to that. Whereas, one, there's a lot of women, a lot of men who swipe right because. They're just looking for somebody to get have sex with. Right. And they're just like, it's a numbers game. So I'm just going to keep <laughs> swipe, 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 swipe. <laughs> Somebody going to hit me back. Right, 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 right. So that skews the numbers. Yeah. Not to mention women go on a dating app, filters on, makeup on. They're presenting themselves in an enhanced manner. Yeah. All right? That brings in more attention. I know for a fact that if a man actually put more effort into his pictures and how he presented himself he would get more success. I've seen it. I've seen men who, in person, not, they don't get girls like that. Online, they're racking up yeah, because they know how to navigate that aspect. But I do think, even from an offline perspective, for a lot of men, it's, I, I just think that sometimes we're overlooking even some of the simplest tweaks that can make you more attractive. For some guys, simply hitting the gym more often. Hitting the gym. Could change the game completely. Changes your body, changes your testosterone level, gives you more confidence. Exactly. It could be haircuts. Yes, we've all seen them videos. Dude walks in the barbershop, look like one person, comes out looking like a brand new man, all right? Like this. Exactly. Guy. You know what I'm saying? And 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 again, makes them feel more confident, make, helps them be more assertive. I think little things like that can really go a long way for men to find more success and not get caught up in what they're hearing on the internet. Because again, I think a lot of men get discouraged by that. So I'll give an example where, you know, on the internet, you'll hear jokes about short men all the time. Yeah. And even in person. 
But every short man that I know who successfully gets women, he doesn't let that phase him. No. He never lets any of that get to his head. He doesn't believe in the whole short. Be the most confident joke. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Five foot nothing, walking like he's six foot. No four. fear. <laughs> no fear. I told a dude that one time. I'm like, you, <laughs> you walking around like you might. Yeah. Gave him a little. <laughs> I'm telling you. And so again, he the, he doesn't let that narrative defeat him. Good. And I think a lot of yeah. men have to not let the narrative defeat you. There are, and there's there's such there's so many women out there. There's a lot of women. Yeah. So even though, yes, there may be a certain pool of women that you're not going to be able to get yeah. for various reasons, there are other pools that you can pull from that you can be happy with. And again, it goes back to, are you focused on just this specific thing you want or the person who can make you happy and you can enjoy life with? Gotcha. I remember one time I heard in the, in the barbershop, and I'm not saying men have to do it like this, or even women, but he said, I, I had a woman who was an eight- Broke up with her. I got me a five. Yeah, I'm the happiest I've ever been in my life. <laughs> All right. Now, for some people, going that much lower is not going to work for them. Right. So I'm not telling you that you have to sacrifice attraction. There needs to be attraction there. But once he made attraction less of a priority for him, he's the happiest he can be. I got you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So again, and for everybody, it's going to be something different. Like I know someone like me, I'm not sacrificing on attraction. Yeah. It's just not going to happen. But for someone else, they can do that and again, still be good. Yeah. And the one, the piece of advice I want to give young men out there, especially young men, stop wasting your masculine energy on women who do not care about you, who are not committed to you. And the reason why that's so important is because your divine masculine energy is connected to everything. So when you give that energy away, you wasting your resources, pouring them into women who do not love you. But because you like them and you love the attraction and you like the attention that you get with you with, with, when you're with these women, you're willing to waste your resources. You have to understand you're compromising yourself. And it's so important for young men to know that there will be time for that. Mm -hmm. Most men come into their own in their 40s. Most people, most millionaires become millionaires when they're in their 50s. Mm -hmm. So it's so important that during those early years, you conserve that energy and use that energy that they talk about in the book. Uh, what is it called? Uh, is it Way of the Superior Man or is it Think and Grow Rich? Think and Grow Rich. Yeah. Sexual transmutation. Yeah. Using that, ener that sexual energy to put into creation and actually building yourself as a man. So Absolutely. One, and I want to add, because it, it kind of just hit me, I think the other thing that especially good men or the average man needs to understand is when, when you gave all that goodness to a woman, be real with yourself. Was it that she did not appreciate the good or was it that you slid too much in your feminine while you was with her? Mm, yeah. A lot of men do not realize that they're becoming overly emotional. They're becoming insecure. They're becoming too soft because they're... And again, it's not the love. People think it's the love that's doing that to the man. No, it's the fear that's doing that to you. It's the fear that she won't like you anymore. It's the yeah. fear that you're not going to find someone like this anymore. It's things like that. I'm not saying... To me, the love... What I view... What I believe is happening is going back to the yin-yang theory. Yeah. It's kind of like I view it as the superhero dynamic. Yeah. When a superhero arises, a villain comes about every single time, all right? So to me, when love arises, fear comes to try to conquer it or counter it, so to speak. And you have to be strong enough to push away the fear and stay in your superhero. Yeah. But a lot of people, they don't know how to handle that. Yeah. And they think, well, this is happening to me because of the love, because I'm in this. No, it's the fear that you are not handling and managing, which many times stems from unresolved trauma from your past. Yeah. As well as I do think part of it is a lot of men have been set up because we were taught, treat her like a queen and put a, do this and do that and all this stuff. Without put setting boundaries, yes. without having consequences for actions, without saying, okay, but if you're not going to honor and respect me in return, you don't get to remain here. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm, I'm a firm believer. Yes, put her on a pedestal. Not pedestal in the sense that she is higher than you. Pedestal in the sense that she is above the rest of the women. And you're special to me. Exactly. She is your queen. So the way the queen is on that pedestal, that's your queen. But if she does not respect the throne, 
Yeah. She got to go. Yeah. Plain and simple. And you have to be strong enough to walk away from it. It reminds me of this movie. You ever saw the movie Heat? Yeah. And they say you never get too attached to it. You can't walk away from something in 15 seconds or something like that. Seconds. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and maybe we're not saying 10 seconds in a relationship, but it's the mentality of you have to be strengthened in being able to detach from anything that is not good or not best for you. And I think even when you look at it from a biblical standpoint, that's an accurate philosophy yeah. because even Jesus walked away from his family. Like th- he had no attachments to anyone. You know what I'm saying? It doesn't mean you don't Buddha love someone. The same thing. There you go. And it don't mean you don't love and care for these people. It just means you cannot tolerate and accept certain things out of this fear that I have to remain here or hold on to them or I won't find something better. That is unhealthy. Got you, got you, got you. Love this, bro. <laughs> <laughs> are you familiar with the um, the concept women are from Venus, men are from Mars? Yes. This whole, like, meaning men and women have different emotional requirements? Yes. Okay, so with that being said, do you believe the inability to set the differences on both part is playing a, a, a huge, you know, um, part in why so many relationships are falling apart? Absolutely. Okay. I, I believe that we're in a society where more and more, again, they're trying to create this equality thing. They're trying to blur the lines between man and woman and what our energy is and, and what that means as far as our person, our traits and the things that the roles that we live in. And we're not honoring the differences. And when we don't honor and respect and understand the differences, we create more conflict. And if we would just be real with each other about what those things are, we can get into better alignment with each other and create more harmony. Got you, got you. And so with that being said, it kind of goes back to that ma- divine masculine and divine exactly. feminine exactly. conversation. Got you. And I, and I think just even in general, just the the biological differences between men and women. Gotcha. Like there's certain things we can't deny. For example, which again, it goes back to the yin and yang. We all have testosterone and estrogen. Yeah. Man and woman. We all have masculine and feminine energy. It's just one is the more dominant energy for or dominant hormone for one, one is the more dominant hormone for the other. And we have to understand that those things dictate certain aspects about us as human beings. Gotcha. That's just reality. If you take a woman and you start giving her testosterone injections, she's gonna get more aggressive. She's gonna be more, she's gonna be, get hornier, she's gonna have a higher libido. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like things are she's gonna Feel the difference. You start injecting a man with estrogen, he will get more emotional. Like people don't understand, it's literally in the literature. He will become more emotional. He will become more sensitive. Like these things happen on a biological level. So if we can't respect that, we're gonna have problems. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And and I do think that part of what it's there's a ideology. There's there's a so there's people who are trying to change that narrative. But I also think that the the food, the environment, all these things are also throwing things off. So basically, with men's testosterone dropping so low, we're seeing less of that difference that we used to see. Yeah. So now we see more emotional, mostly driven men in today's world than we ever did before. Which is, which is the most dangerous kind of man. Exactly. Yeah, that's the the boy who walks into the school and shoots up the school. That's the man who beats his wife, mm-hmm. you know. So that's the most dangerous type of man, and unfortunately, you know, a lot of trauma bonding and unhealthy, toxic relationships are based on the fact that, you know, sometimes a man or a woman wants somebody who's overly emotional. Yeah, yeah. So, yes. got gotcha. you. It causes a lot of problems. Got gotcha. you. Let me ask you a question. Mm-hmm. <laughs> now the ladies want to know. <laughs> ladies want to know you now. <laughs> You know, and you know, you know how I am. I'm super private. Uh huh. Yeah. I'm yeah. super private, and you are as well. But I would not be doing the audience a, a service. <laughs> oh, <didn't>. oh, now is that? That was for the audience, right? Okay. Yeah, so, question: Have you ever been in love or had your heart broken? Yeah. Tell us a little bit about it. So I remember my first experience. Um, it was like. So end of high school, transitioning out of high school. And uh, it was a girl, met her at that time. We were like best friends. Yeah. And really, really liked her, you know what I'm saying? And so 
you know, she was saying she didn't have interest like that. But it was like the behaviors was not consistent with what she was saying. Gotcha. So anyways, you know, still th- life goes on. We're still friends. There's still this conflict. And then one day she tells me about some dude who she met down the street who's like following her being all crazy, right? And I'm like, okay. And she's like, yeah, he's crazy. I'm not messing with him. All right, cool. Two weeks later, they're in a relationship. <laughs> and then eventually she ends up marrying this dude. All right. Wow. So that was my first, and and I remember being so heartbroken, and I was like, that turned me into a savage, though. Okay. Because at that point, I was like, f the world. Yeah. I don't care. I don't care how anybody feels. I'm gonna do what I want to do, and that's it. Crazy thing is, many years after that, she hit me up. Um, she's she divorced that guy. She's moved on to other another relationship. I don't know what's going on now, but she told me she was just scared. Yeah. That she did have feelings. She didn't want to lose me as a. She didn't want to take the chance of losing me as a friend. So she figured, you know, just keeping as friendship was the safest way to have me in her life, basically. Gotcha. You know what gotcha. I'm saying? Which happens to a lot of people. Yeah. Believe it or not. Both men and women. Exactly. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And and I get it. I get it. But you know, it was just unfortunate. And I think what was it was more frustrating at that time for me before she had those confessions or whatever, because it was like you told me this dude crazy and all, and this is exact. And then it was a toxic relationship yeah it was a toxic marriage it was like yo you and this is that's not that's not because of that story but that's an example of how so many people see the red flags from day one and just ignore them or rationalize past them or whatever and then the whole thing blows up and you're like i don't know what no it was always there gotcha gotcha. you saw he was crazy from day one okay gotcha but you know it is what it is but yeah so that's that's that was my experience okay and so you became a savage after that. <laughs> but how does you go from a savage to being this love guru that you are today? God, man. God God eventually slapped me upside the head. I will say, I think, I think the savage part was going down a little bit after that. Because he, there was one at one point in my life where my homeboy was like, yo, you cold hearted. Yeah. And I was like, damn, is it that bad? <laughs> you know, and I had the mentality, yo, you know, especially because I was brutally honest. I was very blunt. Yeah. And I'm but like, you well, know, I'm, I'm a big fan of being honest. Yes. Yeah. But you know, I, I've learned it's not what you say, it's how you say it. Yeah. And I've had to learn how to be better with my delivery. Um, but yeah, I think eventually the real strong transition out of it was the spiritual journey yeah. and was going through a lot of spiritual occurrences and different things that kind of opened my eyes to God and, yeah. and to, you know, all this deeper revelation. And that's what kind of pulled me out of that kind of mold. Okay. So at least to the point where I didn't, I was, I had more compassion. I had more consideration and I healed, I healed, I was able to heal. And that was the most important thing. Yeah. And so you heal and then you wake up one day and say, I'm going to write 10,000 books <laughs> and explain to women Man. how to love and how to men how to love as well, too. Is yeah. that what happened? No. Nah, like, no. Nah. Okay. What happened? So funny enough, when I, when I was in the savage period of my life, I used to joke about writing a book for men on how to have sex with women. Right. Okay. I used to always joke about it. I was like, Yo, I can break this whole thing down so easy. Right. But I never took it serious. I'm not a writer. I'm yeah. not a writer. I wasn't. I didn't even read. Wasn't books a like writer. That. Yeah, I wasn't a writer. <laughs> <laughs> and so what happened was through the spiritual journey. Um, it's a long story, but I ended up moving from Miami to Georgia, being yeah. surrounded by married couples. They were all coming to me for advice. So it was this combination of different events. Going through a spiritual journey. So God told me to move to Georgia, surrounded by these married couples looking for advice, and then feeling God tell me, okay, it's time to write a book. But I can't write a book about how to have sex with a woman, but I noticed all the married men were complaining about a lack of sex. Yeah. So I was like, oh, so I'll make it how to get a woman to have sex with you if you're her husband. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll help the husbands get more sex, you know what Got I'm saying? You. And so it started with that book, and even then, I did not know where this would go. I did not know where this was taking me. I didn't understand what God was doing. All I knew was at that time, he said, write this book. Yeah. So I was like, all right, I'm just going to write it and see what happens. And then from there, I was like, all right, God, what's the next step? And then it was create this blog. And I never wanted to create no blog. Again, I didn't see myself as a writer. Gotcha. You know what I'm saying? But it was just do it. And I was just big on, all right, I'm just going to do whatever I feel God's telling me to do. Gotcha. And I just kept following the steps. And before you know it, here I am now. Stephon's feet. Yeah, exactly. 
<laughs> yeah, because you know, like I, you know, when we first met, I remember you telling me you were celibate. Yeah. And I think at that point it had been like two years or something like I can't that. Remember, it was it was it was a minute. And every day, like I'm confused because I'm like, you still celibate? <laughs> <laughs> every day we go to work out, like, yo, what about today? <laughs> Uh, and so, you know, kudos to you, man. You have a level of discipline when it comes to that that is unmatched by yeah. most men that I that I know. I, you know, I I, I I I honestly feel like I was just lucky. Like I don't know, because I, I I I feel like I'm still a very highly sexual person. Yeah. And throughout, even through those times where I've been abstinent, it was always there. I don't know. I don't know how I made it happen. I don't know how I got through. I can only say God because. Okay. I don't know. It was. It was. Yeah. I don't know. I think you should write a book about that for both <laughs> men and women. <laughs> for women, it's easier though. Yeah, of course. It's easier. Course, I know some may not like hearing that, but it goes back to the realities of our differences. Yeah, it's easier for men. And, and I think the the thing is though, what people have to understand when it comes to having certain disciplines, I am. I'm a believer now that a lot of discipline is circumstantial. Yeah. Okay, so it's like if you're a man and you're not having any options available to you, you don't have access to much women, then being disciplined is going to be a lot easier. Which plain is and why simple. 33% of men are actually in sexless. Exactly. Whereas if you are constantly around it, there's constantly opportunities, it's a completely different level of discipline. And I think that's the reason when people heard about me being abstinent, they looked at it like, oh my gosh, how are you doing this? Because right. At that time in my life, it's like, oh, we know you can get whatever, yeah. <laughs> and you over here controlling that aspect, you know, and, and yeah, that that definitely makes a difference. You know okay, what I'm saying? Got you. Got you. So um, the ladies also wanted me to ask, <laughs> why the hell aren't you married, bro? <laughs> my own boy going to ask me this question. <laughs> I mean, I just, that, not me. I'm the, asking for a friend. I get you. I get you. Because, <laughs> you know, like, everywhere I go, like, friends, family, like, yo, is he single? <laughs> like, and then I go, ask him. That's none of my damn business. But, you know, like, you know, tell the people. Yeah. So th there's a lot of layers to it. Yeah. All right? I'm going to try to run through them fast. Okay. Layer number one is just God's timing. Yeah. I'm a firm believer that... I have to wait for when God says this is it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I meet a lot of great, amazing women, and I may enjoy them, I may get along with them, but that doesn't mean we are meant to be together. Yeah. And I think from an even deeper spiritual perspective, people don't understand that there are things going on behind the scenes that you can't see, and this is why you lean on God, because he sees it all. Yeah. So I'll just say one example. I remember one time I met a girl, and she was great. But I could feel this dark energy on this woman. Yeah. And I just knew there was some other stuff going on. Yeah. The problem is you can't explain that to the world. Because if they don't have the eyes you have or the spirit you have, they're not picking up on those things. So right. to them, it's like, you're crazy. You're making excuses. It's like, no, I know. And I've been through enough experiences to know I'm not tripping. I know how this works. I've seen worse things before. So I know what, what this is. But... It's hard to communicate that to individuals. So I do yeah. think the the spiritual aspect is is big. I think what connects to that is I was explaining on this other podcast the other day that so I, are you familiar with the sixteen personality types, the Meyer Briggs personalities? Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. so you know I'm an INFJ, yeah. which is the rarest personality, and it's the rarest for men. One percent of men are INFJ, and the reason why it's so rare amongst men is because of the intuition part. Got gotcha. you. And so. I have a very high level intuition. So I, I look at it like this. Think about how we say, or I always say, women's intuition tells them right away, this guy ain't it. Yeah. But they find reasons to rationalize, move past that, or they allow their emotions to drive them past their intuition and move forward anyway. Gotcha. I possess the intuition, but I still possess the ability to not be driven by my emotions. So when I see what I see like they do... I can't rationalize past that. Got I can't you. convince myself, oh, no, I'm just tripping. It's, it's fine. No, I know what I know. You know what I'm saying? And again, it's not something that everyone can understand yeah. or even see on the surface. Um, and then I also think that when you're in the position that we are in, all right, and, and yeah. other men such as us, it doesn't get easier. 
Yeah. I think that's why a lot of men, not saying that I think this is the way to do it, but I think this is one of the reasons why a lot of men get a woman before they become very successful. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because once you do, there's a lot more factors, there's a lot more to consider now. It's very different. You know what I'm saying? Not to mention, the woman that you choose to be with, I don't want to say it like this, but... Well, I, let me say this. A man is always going to be judged by... His woman. Yeah. She is a reflection of him. Yeah. So when you make a poor choice as a man, they always look at the man like, well, you made poor decisions everywhere. Exactly. And the other thing I, I've I've seen as well too, and you know, through conversations not only with yourself but other people as well too, is that I find it's very important to understand that when it comes to choosing a mate. They have to be in a position to honor that you already have your purpose. Mm -hmm. Meaning like like for me, I already have my purpose. My ultimate goal is to create this healing center. Mm -hmm. I'm plant-based. I want my kids to be plant-based. I I have a totally different lifestyle than most women want to ever spend a day doing. Exactly. And, And to that point, not to cut you off, but to that point... A lot of women may view us and they see the surface of it, right? Yeah. And they think, oh my gosh, I want this. But they don't understand the deeper details, like the lifestyle we're trying to live, the standard yeah. that we set. And because we are successful men and we've achieved much, we have a higher standard than expectation. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because we live by certain principles and certain disciplines. And we're not deviating from that right. because you don't want to. And we're not going to let you throw us off. Right. You know what I'm saying? So if we're trying to eat healthy, we're not trying to have you in the house eating all types of trash. And now that you're affecting our ability to navigate in this household and be at peace with it. I don't want to see all that stuff. Yeah, I, I don't want to be surrounded by that stuff. So I do think that that adds another layer of it just it's, it's, it, it shrinks the pool got you, got of, you. of women that you can actually align yourself with and... Or, or who are actually in alignment with you. Yes. You know what I'm saying? And I think that, as you mentioned, not only are we judged by the woman that we choose, but many nations have fallen because of a woman. And when I say because of a woman, I don't mean yeah, it's all her fault. That, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the woman has the power to bring it down. Power. I yes. mean, that the man, if he is not in control of, of his masculine, on his purpose, all these things, he can be easily derailed. And so if you let the wrong woman into your life, she can throw everything off. Because she's that powerful. Yes. And when you have a lot more at stake, you have to be even more particular. Makes sense. Not only, not only who you actually get with, who you even deal with in general, yeah. you have to be more careful. Got you, got you, got you. And, but do you give grace? And the reason grace for when somebody you meet somebody and maybe they're not perfect mm-hmm. maybe they're not healed do you give a little grace for them yeah absolutely i to me i i don't discount you for the issues that you have i will only discount you if you don't want to work on those issues that makes sense you know what i'm saying so to me it's like all right we we're talking we're getting to know each other if i recognize these things we're going to address it if you're willing to go on the path to resolve it then we good got you but if you're going to fight me on that <laughs> <laughs> well, I can't Fight me on your you. own healing. Yes. yes. I, then I can't, there's nothing I can do here because gotcha. I know how this plays out. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I know that the longer we stay, if I get with you and the longer we stay together without this being resolved, the harder it will be for you to actually face it and resolve it. That makes sense. You know what I'm saying? So, nah, do that first and then we can move forward. Yeah. And that makes sense because even being in the healing space, being a healer, I tell people all the time, I don't heal anybody. I guide people along their journey. Nobody can heal anybody else. Exactly. So that's really important. All right, so question. A friend asked me. (laughs) Another friend. (laughs) What what does your ideal woman look like? My ideal... And when I say look, character, whatever whatever comes to mind. All right, so of course has God in her life. You know, that's, that's number one, or at least that's a huge part. Yeah. So God... Feminine energy yeah. is huge. I, I just, that's what I love. I love feminine Me too, energy brother. and I'm not compromising on that. I didn't create anything better. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so, feminine energy, health minded. All right. Okay. Health minded. So, doesn't my exercising, yeah. whatever it is, I don't care if it's yoga, Pilates, weight, but you're keeping yourself fit. 
you're being mindful of what you eat. I'm, I'm, I'm flexible in the sense of we can have a cheat day. We can have moments where we have certain things, but your, your, the majority of how you, your lifestyle needs to be in a healthy manner. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Makes sense. Um, I also think a woman, again, because I'm, I'm talking ideal, yeah. right? Ideally, a woman who can enjoy her own space. Yeah. And what I mean by that is I'm a man who sometimes needs space. Yeah. All right. I can't be up under you 24-7. Not to mention we on tour, we traveling, we right, doing right. things. If you don't know how to function within your own space and enjoy your life, it's going to cause strain on me. Because you're going to feel neglected. Exactly. And it's going to cause problems and I don't want that. So I'm someone, I, I want you to have friends. I want you to be good with your family. I want you to have outlets and, and another world that you can experience that you can share with me. Yeah. I'm not going to hinder you from doing those other things. Be free. You know what I'm saying? Of course, respect the relationship, but be, right. <laughs> be free. I'm like, hold up. <laughs> But it, be able to enjoy your space. Um, I think also what what's coming to me is someone who respects my ambition. Okay. All right. And vision. Yes, because I do feel that not everyone like you have some people that be like, why you gotta be in the gym all day? Yeah. Why why you gotta always eat healthy? I don't want to. No no no. I want you to see what I'm doing and be like, encourage, encourage. it. You know what I'm saying? And push it. If if I don't go to the gym for a few days, you be like, baby, what's going on? Yeah. You need to get back in there. Oh, your stomach get a little too big. Like yeah. I'm cool with that. <laughs> Tell me, push me to greatness because that's all I'm striving for anyway. So I want someone who respects that, honors that. You know what I'm saying? Um, other than that. And real quickly, what makes you feel loved? And then I got my last question for you. Okay. Um, so the other thing I'm going to say is, well, okay, so I'll just answer the what makes me feel loved. What makes me feel loved, I, I think respect and physical touch. So, you know, the five love languages, yeah, yeah, mine yeah. is definitely physical touch. Gotcha. You know what I'm saying? I want, and it's not for me even about like sex. I love intimacy. I love affection. Okay, you know what I'm so saying? You're a cuddle buddy. <laughs> to a certain extent. <laughs> I like a woman who don't mind some PDA. Okay, gotcha. And who will initiate it herself. I haven't got to be the one to always do it. Again, this is ideal. Gotcha. Does it mean it's a deal breaker? She's not all like that? No. But it's an ideal thing that if we're outside chilling, she's going to walk up to me and start being PDA. Gotcha, gotcha. I like that type of stuff. I like that I like energy. That too. You know what I'm saying? I like that too. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's just intoxicating. You know what I'm saying? It's a beautiful thing. Um, so yeah, so I would say that makes people love. And when I say the respect, I say the respect in the sense that I think what I'm really trying to convey is someone who understands, like I don't do well with stress. Yeah. I, and so I live my life trying to limit and reduce stress as much as possible, even to the point of how I pace my day making sure I'm breathing correctly, sometimes just doing some breathing exercises, you know, not letting my mind get overwhelmed. So I've learned to like tackle things one at a time because it's too much if I try to multitask. So, so someone that respects me in the sense that says, I don't want to bring him drama. Yeah. I don't want to bring him nonsense. Let me add more to that piece he's trying to create already. You, it's not even necessarily you have to be my piece, but you have to add to it. And you have to respect it because I'm already creating it for myself. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Don't be this whirlwind of a woman that comes in and wreaks havoc. I'm not going to entertain that. I'm just yeah. not going to do it. Yeah, and I think I think most men who are in their divine masculine um, would love to find their peace in their woman. Mm -hmm. So a large part of their peace is their woman. So I can see yeah, how that's... Yeah, absolutely. All right. Last question of the day. All right, all right. If you ruled the world... <laughs> If you rule the world, brother, uh -huh. if I rule the world, <laughs> how would you heal our community when it comes to love and relationships? Oof. If I ruled the world, how would I heal the community? Yeah, because man, I just want to see men and women come together and love and we bask in our, our, our respective divine femininity and respective divine masculinity. I would do three things. Okay. I would mandate therapy counseling. Okay. Everyone. Good. All right. They gotta go through that. That's like it's like almost like a school course. Yeah. All right. So everyone has to go through it. Got you. And properly resolve all because because once you resolve the past traumas, because there's always gonna be new things that come your way. 
But once you learn to overcome the past ones, the new things don't affect you the same. Got you. And you now have a better a blueprint of how to handle it. So your bounce back is way faster and way stronger. Got gotcha. you. Know what I'm saying. So we just need you to go through that process once, and you're gonna be good pretty much. All right. Number two. So, number two. Change the culture of music and TV in the community. Yes. All right. Got to get back to that love and high vibrational. Yeah, music. because all the stuff we got now is just making it worse, and it's contaminating folks, and it's it's just feeding them negative narratives. And, and TV, music, the internet, all that stuff. I would change all of that if I could, because I really think if we change that, it will it will change the energy and the mindset of so many people in the community. Gotcha, gotcha. Number three. The third thing is. Their health. I really feel like people don't understand if you're not healthy, your ability to show up in a relationship in a positive, loving manner is severely hindered. Gotcha. All right. Because now you're depressed all the time or you're low energy. And when you're low energy, depressed, anxiety, your ability to create positive moments or embrace the positive moments and, and really focusing on them is, again, severely hindered. Yeah. It's going to be easier for your mind to go to a negative place. Yeah. So if we have you feeling good from within with your health, it's going to start to come out of you in a positive way. And now all those three things to me will come together and we be, the community would be great at that point. Because the healed version of you and the unhealed version of you make two totally different sets of decisions yes um, based on love based on thoughts based on beliefs etc. And, and creates different perspectives of life okay cool and real quickly one of my favorite books of yours is love after heartbreak yes you talked a little bit about a heartbreak that you went through yeah. give us one tip from the book one tip from the book i always give is the do the who hurt me list okay okay uh get a piece of paper write down who hurt me ask yourself that question and yeah. everyone who comes to mind put them on the paper and then like a couple sentences of what happened. This is how we start to identify what we're holding on to and what needs to be resolved. Gotcha. You know what I'm saying? So from there, there's a lot more steps, but I think people just need to start there because people have suppressed it for so long, they don't even realize what's what's going to come out on that list when they ask that question. Okay. And when you write it, do you have to send it to them or just write it? So it's the Who Hurt Me list, then it's going to be writing some letters, but there's a certain way to write the letters that the book lays out. And sending is part of the process <laughs> in, in the vast majority of cases. Some cases, they're going to be exceptions to every rule. But in the vast majority of cases, sending will be a part of the process. Got you. I told you about, you know, with me, I had written a letter to my dad when I was 23 mm -hmm. about how, you know, he hurt me with a situation. And, um, you know, my dad had responded perfectly. He uh, instantly got the letter, drove up um, to Atlanta, we spent the weekend together, mm -hmm. we cleared everything. He kept the letter for almost, you know, 15 years. My dad recently passed away mm -hmm. and my mom found the letter and she bawled and cried, you know, cause I talked about going through homelessness and I just felt like my dad wasn't there and he was the only person I wanted to be there. And um, that letter, even today when I heard my mom read it, it changed my life cause it reminded me of the relationship me and my dad had. So. Mm -hmm. I highly encourage reading the book, Love at the Heartbreak, Absolutely. for that reason. All right, cool. Brother, I appreciate you. Same here, man. Coming here. This has been amazing. I hope that people get healing from the conversation that we've had today. Again, I want to thank you for being not only a friend to me, a business partner, co-owner of Sankofa Tropical Farms, yes, but sir. being my brother in life. Absolutely, man. Until the next time. So until the next time, peace and blessings. Thanks for coming with us on Heal My People TV. And I'll see you in the next episode. Thank you.